Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at chapter 14 of IB Math Studies and this chapter is all about geometry, specifically about perimeter, area and volume. In the first part of this video we're going to be taking a look at perimeter, area and surface area, which are the three um, relatively easy topics that you may have forgotten, but I'm going to be showing you the formulas that you fortunately do not have to remember because they are in your formula sheet. And let's jump in with the first topic, which is the perimeter. We're going to skip the conversion of units because we've actually done this topic before. Uh, it's in the, one of the previous videos. But perimeter here refers to, of course, the sum of all of the sides of a shape. So in this case, uh, perimeter of a square is if you add all four sides together. So it's pretty easy. It's just four length. A perimeter of this polygon right here is a, a sum of all of these sides. And they can be different length, of course. So this is A plus B plus C plus D plus, plus E. A rectangle perimeter can be found uh, by multiplying these two sides by 2 and then also these two sides by 2 and adding them together. So that's 2 length plus 2 width or 2 times the length plus width. And the more difficult perimeter is, is of course the one of a circle and there's a word for it and it's called circumference. And the two ways of finding perimeter of a, or circumference of a circle is to either use a diameter or a radius. If you have just a little radius right here, you then have to use this formula, which is 2 pi r. This is given to you in the formula sheet as well. If you have the diam diameter, then you're using this formula, which is pi times d. Of all of these formulas, the only one you, you don't have to remember is this one here, because it's actually given to you in the formula sheet, but the other ones you have to kind of understand and try to remember. So basically that's it for perimeter. It's a very, very simple topic. We're actually going to try a few problems with perimeter uh, just to see if you get this, but let's actually do one of the examples. And we're going to be looking at example four from page 415, I believe. And this is the example, find the perimeter of this figure. So before you even start looking for the perimeter, let's take a look at the shapes that we have here. We have a circle, actually technically this is semicircle. So half of the circle and this half of the circle can be measured with either radius or diameter. Now we don't have a radius, but we do have a diameter. Look at that. There's a diameter right here. So this diameter is actually 10.8. So we're going to be using the formula uh, circumference is pi times D, but in this case, it's a semicircle. So we need to divide this by two and you can actually start writing this already in numbers. Uh, 314 times 10.8 divided by 2. And the answer here is 16.96 centimeters. Uh, so this is the perimeter of the semicircle. So the second part is, of course, the rectangle. But here's the thing. This is not an actual rectangle. This is actually an incomplete rectangle. There's a side here, a side here, and then another side here, but this part is missing. So if you do use the formula, it's actually very easy to make a mistake and accidentally count this as well. So this side is actually not included in our perimeter. It much, it's much easier to just count the three sides and add them up. So basically what we can do is 4.2 because these are equal plus 10.8 plus 4.2. And this will actually, if you add them up, if you add this plus this plus this, you will get you will get 19.2 centimeters and this is basically the green part. So now all you need to do is basically add these two up. So add up 1696 plus 19.2 and we need to get a significance uh, of three significant figures and the answer will be 36.2 centimeters and this is because of the significant figures. So this is the final answer here. Basically this is how you would do a perimeter problem. Now these are relatively uh, easy, but it gets more difficult when, you, when it comes to area. So let's actually take a look at area question now. And here's actually the list of different areas from the book using various shapes. So rectangle area is length times width. Uh, this is something that you should already remember. Triangle, you usually have to find the height, which is the perpendicular line right here. And then uh, it's half of height times base. Uh, for a parallelogram, it's base times same thing times height, but there's no half here. So basically, it's kind of like the area of a triangle, except you get rid of the half. Uh, for a trapezoid or trapezium, uh, it's this side plus this side. Now divide this the, uh, the sum of these two sides by two, and then also, once again, multiply by the height. And finally, for a circle, it's 
uh, radius squared multiplied by pi. So these are areas that are given to us in the book, but the thing is you don't really have to remember them because here's um, here's the list of all of the area formulas from the formula sheet that you'll be given. I'm gonna put them right here just so that you can get an idea for what these formulas are. So we have an area of parallelogram right here. We have an area of a, of a triangle, a trapezoid, circle, and also circumference of a circle. Then there is an area for a curved surface of a cylinder. This is a little bit more complicated. We'll be talking about this a, bit, a little bit later, but it's essentially a surface area of a cylinder. There's a surface area of a sphere and surface area of a cone. So there's actually quite a lot of formulas, but obviously not all of them. Some of them you'll have to kind of think about and figure out, like for example, uh, the, um, the area of, so for example, area of a rectangle is actually not given to us because it's assumed that you can figure out that this is actually width times length. It's not a very difficult formula to figure out. So this is why it's, it's not given to you here. But all of the other areas are in, in the formula sheet, so you don't really need to remember them. So let's actually try a problem um, just so that we can actually figure this out. But before the problem, I'm actually going to also put this in here, and this is a conversion table for units. Now, for example, if I'm trying to convert 10 square meters to square centimeters, this is something you have to remember. And this is the same for volume, uh, or I guess it's very similar to for, for volume you don't just multiply this by a hundred, you multiply it by a hundred and then another time by a hundred. So in other words, you multiply this by 10,000. So, and for volume, that would be hundred times hundred times hundred or uh, a million, I guess. Yeah, I guess a million. So here, the answer to this would be actually 100,000 centimeters square. So in one square meter, there's actually 100,000 centimeters square. And I'm just going to keep this up here just so that you get an idea. If there's any unit conversion, you need to remember to always uh, do this. For, for, for radius, you're doing it twice. And for volume, you're doing it three times. So the, And it's only if you are asked to find this in different units. And let's try example eight uh, from your book. And this is actually, it has two questions. This one here looks a little bit easier. So you can try this yourself. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this because it seems a little bit more difficult. You need to calculate the shaded area. In other words, the yellowish area. Um, and for this question, there's two shapes here. There's a rectangle and uh, the area of rectangle, if you remember, it's length times width. And there's also a circle and the area of a circle is pi r square. So let's write them here. Area of a rec rectangle is le length times width. An area of a circle is pi r square. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to find the area of a rectangle first and then subtract area of a circle from it because it's basically cut out from the inside. So we're actually not going to have this part. And so the answer here is 4.5 centimeters times 7.8 centimeters minus pi times 2.1 centimeters squared. And let's just try to do this on our calculator. And actually I made a small mistake here because this is not a radius actually. This is a, this is a diameter. So we need to divide this by two. This was my small mistake that I just recently figured out. So yeah, 2.1 divided by two squared. And so it's actually, it's actually uh 1.05 squared. And so the, um, the answer is, the answer is 35.8 centimeters square minus 3.5 centimeters square, which should give us approximately 31.6 centimeters square. This is three significant figures. And this is the area of uh, everything here except for this little circle. So remember, because this is a diameter, this is actually a mistake I made as well, because this is a diameter, we have to convert this to radius. So the radius here is actually 1.05 centimeters. And this is what you will be squaring. So not 2.1, but actually 1.05. So this is how we find the area. Now, just to take it up a notch, let's look at the surface area of a 3D shape. And this is what you need to remember when you're dealing with surface areas. So usually uh, a 3D figure has something called the net. Now the net is uh, kind of looks like this. This is essentially the surface area. So you need to kind of deconstruct this into a collection of 2D figures. So for this particular 
prism, rectangular prism, we can see that there's actually several rectangles here. There's a rectangle here that's similar to this rectangle here. So you can find their areas first. And then there's also a bunch of these rectangles uh, that you can then add together and also these rectangles as well. So there's actually six different rectangles we're going to be adding. And in other words, you're calculating areas of three rectangles, multiplying it by two and then adding them together. So this is something you need to remember when you're working with surface areas. Now, for some surface areas, you're given formula and specifically these three shapes. So number one shape is the cylinder. So this one is given to you already. So you don't have to actually remember it or figure it out. It's on your formula sheet and it's two pi r times height plus two pi r squared. So essentially you find the surface area of this area and then you find the surface area of the circle here and that circle here, and then you add everything together. Uh, also surface area of sphere is given to you as well. This is the number two and the surface area of a sphere is four pi r square. So you don't have to remember this either. It's given to you. And lastly, a surface area of a cone is also given. And this is essentially where you have a surface area of this circle plus the surface area of the actual cony part, uh, which is pi times r times l, which is the length here. So these three are, uh, they sound a little bit more difficult, but there's no mem uh, memorizing involved. But a more difficult question would be where you have to actually combine uh, knowledge and try to figure out a surface area of a different type of a shape. So let's actually take a look at an example like that. And this is from page 424, example 10. So basically here we have a square base pyramid. So this is not a formula that we have. And this is a, something we need to figure out without using the formulas of surface area. So what do we have here? So it's a square base pyramid. So obviously on the bottom here, we have a square. An area of this square is going to be 13.2 times 13.2. So this, this right here is the surface area of, a, so this right here is the area of that square, the green square. And I'm actually going to draw it right here. It's going to be kind of like this. This is basically what it would look like if you were to cut this into uh, into its net or into its pieces. Then we have four more shapes here, and these are actually triangles. There's actually this is what it kind of looks like if you were to cut this into pieces and to look at its surface area. So there's also four of these triangles right here that have a height of 22.4. And of course the base is right here, it's 13.2. So for this triangle, you're doing, um, the, basically you're looking at the area of, of this triangle with the height of 22.4 multiplied by the base, which is 13.2 and then divided by two. This is the formula that we just saw a few seconds ago and I kind of covered the height, but it's, it was right here. This was actually, it says right here, 22.4. Here we need to multiply this by four because there's four of them, four different uh, purple triangles. And so what is the total surface area of the square base pyramid? Well, of course it's going to be 13.2 squared, which is the square. This is our square plus four triangles, 22.4 times 13.2 divided by two. And this is, this is our four triangles. If you add this all up, the answer will be approximately 766 centimeters square. And I'm just gonna show you what um, this particular picture looks like in the book because it's, a little, it's, it's drawn a little bit better in the book. So basically this is it. So right here we have our cross section of this um, square base pyramid and the square, the green square is right in the middle. So th this was, this was our square and the area of this square is then added to the area of our purple, uh, triangles that have a height of 22.4 and also the base of same base is same as the length of the square. So the base was at 13.2 as well. And the answer that you get in total is 766 centimeters squared. So essentially this is how you have to uh, work with uh, surface area problems. You need to always um, cut them into pieces, find a cross section or basically the net 
and then look at the shapes that you're given and find each individual area of each individual shape and then add them together. So these problems are slightly more challenging, but they're not too difficult as long as you uh, find the cross section correctly. All right, so this is it for perimeter area and surface area from chapter 14. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye bye.